I think people are vastly underestimating just how good Keegan Murray already is and how good he can be. After his name was mentioned in some rumors that the Raptors were interested in potentially trading for him, he went and dropped a career-high 47 points, coming close to breaking the record for threes in a game with 12 of 15 shooting from beyond the arc. Even before this game, I was already of the opinion that Keegan was pretty much untouchable, but that game should have solidified to a lot of people that it's going to take a lot for the Kings to be willing to move him anytime soon. So much, in fact, that I just really don't see it being feasible for any team to be able to trade for him. Not only is Keegan Murray a promising offensive weapon, obviously showcasing the ability to light it up from beyond the arc, as well as a lot more scoring ability than I think he gets credit for, there's been a new development for Keegan Murray so far this season that's flown under the radar. Keegan Murray has taken a massive leap as a defender. The Sacramento Kings definitely aren't known for their defense, having the 20th ranked defense in the NBA at the time of this recording, but that hasn't stopped Keegan Murray from taking on some of the toughest defensive matchups in the NBA on a nightly basis and proving that he can slow them down. It wouldn't be accurate to say that he necessarily carries their defense, but it certainly functions at its best when he's on the floor. As a matter of fact, when he's on the floor, the Kings are allowing 114.6 points per 100 possessions, which really doesn't sound all that impressive. But the point here is that when he's off the floor, that defense declines to allowing 118.4 points per 100 possessions. How has Keegan Murray evolved into such a strong defensive presence? And what exactly is he doing to have such a major impact on the defensive side of the ball? A lot of the time when we look at the defense that a player is playing, we look at the shots that opposing players are taking against them. But to really understand Keegan's defensive ability, we need to look at the shots that opposing players aren't taking. A great example is what he was doing while defending Michael Porter Jr. in their matchup against the Nuggets. This set early in the possession is gonna get Porter Jr. going into space inside the arc, but Keegan does a good job staying with him on the drive. After Jackson gets the ball to Jokic, Porter Jr. is now going to come up to get a screen so that he can get the handoff from Jokic with the intent being to get him into space on the perimeter so that he can theoretically get a good look from three. But Keegan is going to slither around Jokic's screen. And this is a really small thing, but look at his ankles here. Look at the angle that he's at relative to the floor. He's at less than a 45 degree angle to the ground, using that right ankle to get him around Jokic's screen without losing too much momentum and springboarding back towards Porter Jr. so that he can't get comfortable enough to step into a jumper, forcing him to drive into the help defense where Herder's waiting to contest the shot at the rim and force the miss. We can see him do the same thing here with Porter Jr. cutting up by Jokic to get the handoff, but Keegan's pressure fighting over the screen is enough to prevent him from trying to shoot, and he even picks up his dribble, and he ultimately ends up having to reset the offense back to Jokic up top, and Porter Jr. is gonna spend the rest of the possession in the corner. In this game, Michael Porter Jr. only scored four points in the 21 minutes that he was on the floor with Keegan Murray, and he only attempted two threes, making none of them. In the 12 minutes where Keegan was off the floor, Michael Porter Jr. scored nine points and was four of six from the field. Porter Jr. was able to score twice as many points in the 12 minutes where he wasn't being defended by Keegan Murray than in the 21 minutes where he was. It isn't the fact that he's shutting guys down when guarding them in one-on-one -on -one situations. In a lot of cases, he is, but to a certain extent, some players are just good enough that they're gonna get to their spots no matter what and knock down the shots that they want. But what Keegan Murray excels at is preventing guys from getting into positions and into situations where they can get to their spots entirely, making them uncomfortable and forcing the ball out of their hands and recognizing how to keep them away from their desired spots. He was absolutely dominant in their matchup versus the Cavs defending Donovan Mitchell. He really had little to no issue keeping up with a much smaller player that's known for his quickness and ability to create space and isolation. Keegan was hounding him, chasing him off of screens and forcing him into the help. And any shots that Mitchell did manage to create, Keegan was almost always there to contest them and disrupt the shot. I tracked how Mitchell shot when being defended by Keegan in this game, and according to my tracking, he shot three of 11 from the field. There are very few guys in the NBA that can defend at that high of a level against primary shot creators. 
Keegan is also proving to be very, very switchable, and he understands when he needs to make those switches, having good instincts. And this is also an area where I think the Kings do a good job on the defensive end is just in terms of communication. He starts off this possession fronting Paul George, preventing him from accepting the pin down from Kawhi. Since that's gonna be off the table, Paul George is gonna cut up to try and get an entry pass, but Keegan stays with him and does a good job of denying it. With that option shut down, Paul George is gonna move to set a rip screen on Herter to get man going downhill, but Keegan's gonna make a seamless switch onto him as he drives into the baseline shot, and his contest is gonna force the miss. Here he starts off on Porter Jr. and the Nuggets are gonna run their twirl action, but he recognizes it and knows to switch onto Reggie Jackson as Sabonis covers Jokic. From there, he makes sure that Jokic can't get an entry pass to Jackson in the post, constantly fighting for positioning, and he essentially seals him off from the rest of the possession. Initially, he's guarding Paul George on this play, but Terrence Mann's gonna come up and screen, and since Fox is gonna hedge, Mann is gonna slip and roll to the basket, but Keegan just switches right onto him and he's gonna nab the steal as George makes the entry pass. With his six foot eight frame and nearly seven foot wingspan, he's already inherently well equipped to defend bigger guys. Some of the appeal with Keegan as a defender is how big he is, not just in terms of length and height, but in frame. He's a heavier set guy, but definitely not slow by any means. Watching Brandon Ingram try to back him down here, you can see just how little Keegan's phased by it, not really giving up any ground. To put into perspective just how much better Sacramento's defense functions with him, the five Sacramento starters allow 106.8 points per 100 possessions when they're on the floor together, but when the starters are on the floor without Keegan Murray, the Kings allow 120.8 points per 100 possessions. That's a massive swing, and to me it really drives home how ridiculously impactful Keegan Murray is on the defensive end. And then you factor in what he's been doing on the offensive end, and it all starts to really come full circle. Yeah, if you look at his numbers on the season so far, they don't really pop off the page right now, but in the seven games since returning from injury, he's averaging 19.7 points per game on 50% shooting from three on 6.6 .6 attempts per game, as well as 53.3% from the field on 13.1 shots a night. That's pretty high volume of shots in general, and we're really starting to see him open up his mid-range game a little bit more, getting more opportunities to show some of the ability that he has as an on-ball creator. In those seven games, he's been shooting 56% on mid-range shots, which to give you some perspective, league average is in the low 40s, so this is really solid efficiency. One of the best things that I think perimeter-oriented, off-the-catch style scorers can do to leverage their shooting ability is to punish closeouts in the mid-range. Some guys can attack closeouts and get to the rim, but oftentimes there's gonna be a ton of help waiting for you down there. Something that Keegan has been doing a really great job of this year is taking what the defense gives him when he's attacking off the catch and making use of that open space that he oftentimes finds himself in to create an easy mid-range jumper for himself. He's also been really great coming off of handoffs from Sabonis at the elbows inside the arc, being able to punish mismatches against smaller defenders and get to his spots to create for himself. It's definitely reasonable to have some questions about whether or not he's gonna develop into a high level shot creator, but it's more important to look at him in the context of the Kings as a whole. They don't need him to be some high volume shot creator in the same way that the Warriors didn't need Klay Thompson to be a high volume shot creator. They need him to light it up off the catch from beyond the arc and do a little bit of creation off of screens, and that's it. Anything else after that is just a bonus. But how good is Keegan Murray on track to be? Because he is 23 years old right now. His baseline was already very good. He's one of the greatest three-point shooting rookies ever, but what's the ceiling for him? Longtime viewers of the channel are probably familiar with estimated plus minus, which is a stat that I use somewhat frequently because it's one of the few advanced stats that I think does a pretty good job of contextualizing how much a player is impacting the game. While prepping for this video, I looked at Keegan Murray's defensive EPM over the course of his career so far, and I don't think anything can really give you a better idea of just how much of an improved defender Keegan Murray is than this. This is insane defensive improvement. When you compare his defensive EPM with other guys that are considered elite perimeter defenders, the trajectory that he's on already puts him well on his way to being as productive as these guys defensively. And when you factor in his offensive trajectory, it tells the story of a guy who's on his way to stardom. While the Kings are a flawed team defensively, 
Keegan Murray is definitely a massive bright spot for them, and considering the offensive ability that he showed already during college and throughout his rookie season and even over the stretch of games that he's played this season, there's no doubt in my mind that they have a potential two-way star on their hands. So do you guys think that Keegan Murray is a future all-star? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, first of all, thank you so much for watching and making it this far. Second of all, if you enjoyed it and you wanna see more like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. It helps me out a ton and that's the best way to support my work and help me continue making videos like this. As always, huge thank you to my patrons for helping support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.